Hi, my name is Elizabeth Capello. I'm a current senior in the college. I'm studying biology. And today we'll be talking about Melaleuca alternicola. Um, it's a little bit of a mouthful. It's part of the Myrtaceae family, and it's commonly known as the tea tree or the paper bark tree. Okay. So um, an overview of what we're going to talk about today is botanical characteristics. So how are you going to be able to identify it? Um, traditional uses, you know, how did the aboriginal people use it originally, go through the chemistry and pharmacology to show you some of the structures, um, go through the biological activity, which I think is more of like the gut of this presentation, really shows you what tea tree oil can be used for and how it's used, um, how it interacts. Then look at a couple of clinical studies, um, look at contraindications and current uses. So the botanical uh, description. So um, you all heard of eucalyptus, which is also in the same family. Um, and so this is a, another member that's a little less well known um, here in the United States. And it's indigenous to Australia. Um, it's an evergreen with small white flowers with a, a black paper bark tree. And paper bark is a great name. Um, so it's indigenous to Australia and it's part of New South Wales and Queensland. Um, there has been some correlation seen between the levels of sorry, um, syn uh, synanol and where it is located. So in New South Wales, you see um, low levels of synanol and high um, terpeno for all. And in Grafton, you'll see higher levels of synanol. And in Queensland, you'll see a more a higher level of terpenol, which is um, mostly due to a sort of inbreeding effect among these trees rather than an environmental pressure. Um, and the essential oil of Meluca alternifla <laughs> is tea tree oil. Um, and you might just see it seen as TTO, just so you all know. Right. So it was part of the Aboriginal um, oral tradition, so there are no books documenting it until about the 20th century. Um, they collected it by coppicing, which is where you cut down the tree until you get to the bark, and then, well, sorry, not the bark, the stump, um, and then allows it to grow back. So eco-friendly <laughs> um, and reusable. And the leaves were crushed and they were either placed right on the wounds to help heal them or they were put in water for a simple infusion. Um, it was used for skin infections, bruises, cuts, coughs, colds. And for coughs and colds, they would actually um, inhale the crushed leaves. And so it's a lot of different uses, but mostly the same a way of method um, of using them. And then there were actually rivers that were seen as sacred healing rivers. And the reason for that was because all these leaves were falling into the river and it was creating this infusion. And so they just thought it was like, oh my gosh, this river is extremely holy, when in fact it was just the science behind it. Um, and then it was the 20th century when they discovered tea tree oil, um, which you gain by steam distillation, or um, some people would just break off leaves and then burn them over a fire and you get an oil. So these are um, the three main components. Oh, sorry about the citation getting cut off. Um, of tea tree oil, and you have your terpenol floral, your 1,8 synanol, and the alpha terpenol. Um, and all the oil is insoluble in water, and the international standard of tea tree oil requires a minimum of 30% of the terpen floral, and a maximum of 15% 1,8 synanol. Um, and medicinally, they prefer a lower level of synanol than the higher levels. Um, they're still into why that is. Um, all right, biological activity. I want to make sure we cover all this. Um, so tea tree oil is where it's at when you get to biological activity. That's where the focus of research is. Um, that's what we've been looking at. And it's seen to disrupt cell membrane functions by increasing membrane permeability, disrupting homeostasis, and inhibiting cell respiration. Um, lots and lots of uses from antiseptic, antibacterial, antiviral, all the way to um, possible treatment for melanoma. So we'll start talking about those. Um, as an antiseptic, it's been um, part of certain mouthwashes, and it also was used a little bit for flavoring. Um, and as an acti um, antibacterial, <laughs> used against E. coli, um, Staphylococcus aureus, and Candida albicus, it was seen to increase the permeability of the cytoplasm and the membrane through increased intake of propidium iodine, which is impermeable to the cell otherwise. Um, as part of an antifungal, um, bacterial uh, vaginosis, which is not a bacteria, it's actually a fungus, 
it's a fungal growth within, I think, yes, <laughs> um, within the vagina, which is sometimes confused with a yeast infection, um, but it's not. <laughs> and so with that, they were able to find a very low cost way of a patient for treating that within six days by creating a little gelatin with just a few drops of tea tree oil, and that was able to clear it. Um, it's also been used for oral candidiasis, um, which is really gross. <laughs> um, it's just a fungal growth mostly on your tongue and on the uh, mucous membranes of your mouth. Um, and for dandruff, so lots of different uses. Um, and it's able to not only control the infection, but also eliminate the fungal growth. Um, as an antiviral, certain tobacco plants can get tobacco mosaic virus. And when it was sprayed with tea tree oil, the lesions um, did decrease and it was able to control the virus. Um, during a test to see for antioxidants, it was seen to be similar to the butylated hydroxytoline, sorry, BTH, BHT, excuse me, um, which is actually a synthetic antioxidant that's used in cosmetics and food products, so this would provide a more natural alternative to it. Um, for skin infections, um, like before, I said how it was used just for wounds to heal those cuts, but it's also been seen to help with acne. Um, compared to 5%, sorry, I always want to make sure I get it correctly, 5% benzoyl peroxide, which I bet some of you have used, because <laughs> um, it's very common on the market, it was able to um, decrease the non-inflammatory lesions a lot more effectively than the 5% benzoyl peroxide, and it had less irritation, so no itching, no redness, etc. cetera. Um, as for drug resistance, it was seen to have low resistance um, in single and multi-step mutants of Staphylococcus, Staph, sorry, aureus, and Staph um, epidermis, I can never say these names, <laughs> Entrococcus fasciculus, oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, and so there was low drug resistance seen. Um, and this is what I thought was really interesting when we got to melanoma. Um, melanoma is actually resistant to chemotherapy and radiation. Um, but tea tree oil was actually seen to stop melanoma cells from resisting apoptosis. So this is like a whole new treatment that can possibly be used um, that could be very effective. All right, so some clinical studies, it was actually seen to be effective for um, treatment of lice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in comparison to other products on the market today. And um, they also use it in a double blind test to see if double blind testing is effective, which is when both the investigator and the volunteers have no idea what they're receiving. And so the problem is tea tree oil has a really strong odor, but people, <laughs> so it's really hard to use in double blind tests because everyone knows what's going on. Um, but it was actually seen to be effective because people actually couldn't tell the difference. Um, and so a whole idea of not, of disguising, not telling your, volunteers what's going on um, and how that's effective. And then um, it's mostly been seen as safe, but when taken orally, uh, there has been cases of toxicity. A two-year-old one time ingested um, tea tree oil, which led to them feeling very disoriented um, and low motor skills. And so there has been cases of toxicity, but it hasn't been drastic. There hasn't been any death due to it. Um, and current uses, you can buy it at the body shop. <laughs> um, they have a whole line of tea tree oil. Lots of other companies are making tea tree oil lines, which are actually not just tea tree oil. There are other oils too mixed in, so be careful. Read your labels. Um, and it's also used for ceasing cannibalism among chickens. I'm not joking. <laughs> um, not only would it heal the wounds, but chickens didn't like the taste of it, and they would stop eating other chickens. So um, it's really interesting. So. Melaleuca altrifinol is an amazing plant with a wide variety of uses, and um, we can see from the original uses how we can use it today. <laughs>